Hey guys, welcome to Sam Cole Workshop. We're going to talk about my pressure rail washing trailer setup in here. Uh, so if you're interested in getting into pressure washing or you're already doing it, there might be some great tips for you in here because I do it a lot different than a lot of people do. And for very good reason. Like I said, my setup is, is very unique in its setup and it's set up this way on purpose. Uh, so we'll break it down for you. First thing you're going to have to know though is that you are going to need chemical supplies. Uh, I get mine 55 gallon drums. Okay, I get them in 55 gallon drums. And I can also get them in 15 gallon drums. This drum is actually a rented one um, from the same place, but uh, right there it's basically a pool shock, 12 and a half percent. I keep 15 gallons in there. That's what these are too. These are filled with 12 and a half percent pool shock. So I have four of these on here. So I have 20 gallons. One, two, three, four. One sits right here. One sits right there. To sit up front, you got to kind of even weight out in your your uh, trailer as best you can, and the chemicals are the heaviest thing. So, um, but I do run. So I got uh, 20, 35 gallons of bleach on my trailer. Uh, plus, I fill my X Jet tank up with another five before I go. So I got 40 gallons of actual bleach with me on my trailer. But I get it in 55 gallon drums. They deliver it on a pallet right to me. And uh, then when these are empty, I turn around, I call them. They take these and they bring me three. New ones so that's basically how i handle all that i pump it with a simple pump gravity fed pump it's nice you stick this in give it three or four pumps and because it's it'll just keep siphoning and flowing on its own and do you know to fill these it'll fill a jug in about probably two minutes it'll fill one of those but i only got to pump it a couple of times and it does the rest then just turn the top of it and it stops pumping so works fantastic um, I will put some links to this stuff down below for you if i can remember all the things i'm doing here but uh, that pump is a very good pump works really well i also keep another pump right in here right there in case i have to tap into this one so i don't got to struggle trying to pour that myself which you can but a better chance of making a mess this way i can transfer with that pump from here to any of the jugs i need these are easy enough to pour so like when i'm using my x jet i take this and i'll set it outside and i will pour from them and fill that up so they just make life really easy to run those uh you know to run for these uh these cans these race jugs i will put again links to these on here for you so you have them now as far as my setup you will notice that this is a lot different than most pressure washing trailers okay most trailer trucks or trailers are open in design and they are set up with the pressure washer permanently mounted and the tanks and the soft wash system and everything permanently mounted on there and then they'll have three hose reels okay you'll have your water hook up to the house and you'll have a reel for your pressure wash line and you'll have a reel for your soft wash line. Now, most of those places, most of the people that are doing this kind of stuff um, are doing residential. Okay? And I'm doing residential as well, too. But what I, what I should say is they're doing urban. They're doing subdivisions. Places almost like here uh, where, you know, you got subdivision type houses where I can pull the truck right up here, get out, walk right around the house in the garage, get it done, roll the hoses up, and then drive away. Me... Um, here where I'm at in Michigan, I'm assuming it'll be that way a lot in the places in Georgia too, but um, I deal with a lot of lake houses and a lot of big properties and places where uh, you cannot get to seawalls past the house the garage you, you can't drive past the driveway and then you have five or six hundred feet till you get down by where you got to do these huge stone sea walls and uh things like that or they have a uh, guest cabin that is on the back of the property tucked in the woods and you cannot access it by vehicle and it could be again four or five six hundred feet away uh, or what they call carriage houses and things like that so we deal with a lot of these places where you just can't get a truck to very well and then even if you can and you're running on just a truck or a small open trailer. The problem is when you get done with doing the house. So let's say that this was all one whole setup. When I'm done doing this house, in order to get over to like say that was their carriage house over there, I, I either have to run, you know, keep pulling out a tremendous amount of line, you know, 300 feet, 400 feet of pressure line, three, 400 feet of, of uh, soft wash hose, or I have to roll up all of my lines and move my vehicle over there. So like I said, that stuff can be very annoying. And the, the hardest part of any part of this job is rolling hoses. Yes, they make automatic reels too. They're a pain in the butt also, and they're very expensive, but um, rolling hoses sucks, okay? Well, my setup, I never have to roll that much, okay? 99% um, of the jobs I'm doing, 
I only have to roll out 100 feet of this three quarter inch Flexzilla, okay? I got 100 feet of that and there's another 100 feet of a, like this kind of hose, just a, a cheaper hose, Samson hose underneath that. And then I got another 50 here. So I actually have 250 feet, but really this 100 footer will usually connect me to a water source and my pressure washer is on wheels. So I can hook that up, roll this as far as I need. I have 250 feet of pressure line on here. And I have another 100 feet or another 50 foot section here I haven't even used yet. But usually I only need to take 100 feet of pressure line off of this. And then 100 feet of this gets me 300 feet from the faucet, which will let me do everything. Okay, so that's really simple. So in, in, in reality, when I'm done, I only roll 100 feet of this and I roll 100 feet of that. And then I roll up my 40 foot of uh, X-Jet line. Or if I'm doing uh, roofs and stuff or, or concrete, I need more power than the X-Jet. I go to the soft wash rig, I got 100 feet on there. So, but again, that's on wheels. This is on wheels. That allows me to hit these very unique places um, in these situations much better. So for me, this system is flawless. Does it take me an extra second when I get there to set all this up? Not really, because if you have to roll out, if you got to roll out 100 feet of water line here and 200 feet of that line and then another 200 feet of, uh, of your chem line, you know, it's exhausting. But in the amount of time you did that, I can roll 100 feet of this as I grab these. Notice they're together. I grab both at once. I grab the pressure wash line and the hose line and I pull them out at the same exact time. I walk out there 100 feet and I'm done. I disconnect that line from there and disconnect 100 feet from here. And then I roll my pressure washer right outside the trailer, hook them up or move them to the house if I need to. But this thing is on wheels and very simple. So for me, it's a very easy process. And it, like I said, I'm only rolling 100 feet here and 100 feet there and 100 feet here if I need it. Rather than 900 feet or 750 feet, I'm rolling 300 feet. Big difference, okay? Huge factor for me, again, and what I'm doing, you know, everything is set up for whoever they're doing, whatever they're doing. Uh, pressure washer wise, I run a four gallon per minute machine now. Okay, this machine is incredible. It is belt driven. It is a pressure pro. It's four gallon per minute, 4,000 PSI with a cat pump on it. I love this pressure washer. Now, since I'm not feeding and I don't have to deal with tanks and my trailer, okay, I'm not running buffer tanks. This unit works fantastic in the sense that um, I did put an overflow valve on or a overflow where this would be a return for your when you're off the gun. This thing has got to have water backing up in it. Well, my water just shoots out of this T and constantly has cold water running through this. So when I'm on a gun, all the water goes through the gun. When I let off the gun, it's filtering cold water through my whole pump assembly and just shooting it out and letting it dribble out of these and works great. It's a perfect system for me. I'm not running a bypass into a tank. Now, a lot of people are going to say, oh my God, you're only running four gallons per minute. You're wasting time. You're going so slow. You're not moving fast enough. You don't know what it's like. You need to run uh, 10, 12, 15, 25, 30 gallons a minute on your machines and all this stuff. It's not true. Um, I borrowed for a week a five and a half gallon version of this and I used it. Now, again, if you're doing residential stuff in urban areas where you have the average house is putting out eight gallons per minute, um, then you can run a six or an eight gallon per minute machine, wait on your buffer tanks to fill and you can do all that if you want to. I never have to wait. Okay, I am set up and running the second I pull this out. I don't have to fill tanks. I don't got to wait for tanks to fill. Um, it's just I'm getting it out of most houses with no worries whatsoever. So it does save me time and it works fantastic. The 5.5 gallon one, I had to use that buffer tank on almost every house. I think I did 13 houses that week. And out of 13 houses, there were five of them that I had to pull out this buffer tank and then I was waiting for water because the house only put out, say, three, three and a half gallons per minute. Again, up here, lake houses, a lot of them older. They're very nice and beautiful, but they've been built for a while. They got two-inch wells. Two-inch, three-inch wells, very small, even four-inch wells, and uh, they cannot put out the water pressure. They're getting three to three and a half gallons per minute. You cannot run a eight gallon per minute machine on three gallons per minute without waiting on that water to fill that tank so often. So everything is a trade-off. For me, that trade-off is using a four gallon, I get tremendous speed because I'm not waiting on water in my particular area. Again, if you're you're in an area and you're only doing city stuff on city water and these city houses and things like that where they have good pressure, more power to you. Where I'm at, that's not always an option. And my four gallon per minute one works best. Like I said, that five and a half was nice 
and it gave me a little more pressure for, or a little more water for rinsing and more more flow and i enjoyed it uh but i had to run this buffer tank a lot more now this buffer tank i carry because again even with a four gallon per minute if they're only putting out three and a half gallons a minute or even four um i will bog that machine down even it happens to me it happens to me three or four times a month here in the area where i am in northern michigan quite often with these wells this they won't even run this machine at four gallons a minute I have a small 35 gallon buffer tank and this is on that cart. I can roll it out, set it up wherever I want to. I can hook it with this hose right here, directly into my quick release on there. And I can feed from this buffer tank because it is a belt driven unit. A belt driven unit will draw from a tank. Other ones will not, a direct drive will not. So, but it does work fantastic for this. And then I got a filter and an inlet right there on this thing mounted right on top of that tank. And I have a Hudson float valve inside of there uh, so that it doesn't overfill. Wonder you can see it in there right there. It's a Hudson float valve on the inside mounted on here. So I it you know it doesn't overfill and flow water everywhere. So it's a uh you know it's a it's a great tank, very portable, and like I said, I only gotta use it a few times a month here with my four gallon per minute machine, so it's easy to set up. When I was running at five and a half gallon, this thing was used a lot more and I have to wait a lot longer for the water level, you know. So if you're putting out four gallons a minute and this tank is running um, or let's say yeah, even with four, but if I'm putting out four gallons a minute and they're only putting out three gallons of water per minute out of their tank, I, you know, you'll fill this. It, it'll take time to fill this and then you're going to burn through it. You spend a lot of time waiting on water to be able to do your job, waiting on tanks to fill. With this four gallon a minute, I spend much less time waiting in my areas. So that's my thought process. And then, like I said, it's simple, it's functional, and it works really good for me. If it takes me an extra 10 minutes per house because I'm only running four gallons versus six or five and a half or eight, um, I'm okay with that. Where I think it really hurts me is in concrete cleaning. I don't do as much concrete. I do... 12 jobs a year of concrete cleaning, maybe 15 out of the 75 or 80. I do see because here it's seasonal. Out of those houses, only 12 or 15 are concrete and they're usually not that big. Um, doing a driveway this size, for example, something like this. So we look at this driveway here, which goes for quite a ways. So something like this with with my setup now that i have let's say this would take me an hour and a half to do this um if i was running eight gallons per minute double that i could probably do it in about 40 minutes you know so you can move a lot quicker uh but for me this system works so that's what i do there uh and speaking of concrete cleaning I use a simple classic, the original B, uh, Worldway 20. Honestly, uh, I will probably drop down to an 18 uh, because then I can move faster. With this one, again, only being four gallons a minute, I have to move very slow with this as I'm traveling uh, or you start getting the swirl marks and stuff like that too. So next time I would not go 18 or not, not go 20, I'd probably go 18 um, is what I would probably do to match this unit a little better. Uh, when I bought this, my intention was that I would go from here to a five and a half or an eight eventually. Now that I know I'm not, that's kind of where I stand on that. So, um, so, you know, like I said, this one works and it's affordable, works great, but I would probably go 18 inch myself next time if you're staying with a four gallon a minute machine. Uh, soft wash rig. I built this myself. One of the first things I built, this one is now on year four. And going strong, it is a Gorilla cart that I got. And I have a reel mounted on here with a Curry Tech, 100 foot of Curry Tech chem line. And I have a melt crate there, which just stores all kinds of loose crap, like my respirator and my gloves. And uh, these are pieces I use to chuck the wheels on it when I'm on hills. And, uh, you know, this is uh, gutter uh, cleaner, things like that. So real simple setup. I have an onboard charger, a big deep cycle 30, uh, 32 or 37, whatever they are, grade marine battery here. And a pressure tech 5.5 uh, gallon per minute pump is what I'm using on here. And then I have it fed in to the line. You run it on a simple dipstick setup right here that I just open this up, drop it right in my tank. This is a uh, 26 gallon tank and uh, it does pretty good for me. I mainly only use this for roofs and I use it for concrete, uh, but it was so simple in design and so functional. And again, I need it on wheels. I need this thing capable of being mobile for the things I do. So I pull it right up my trailer ramp, stick it right in here. I can roll it around the house, put it anywhere I need. That 100 feet reaches everywhere. I pull the 100 feet of line off there and I connect it right to here with a gator connector. 
Okay, simple banjo. A banjo uh, connection on there is what I hook the other end of this hose onto that with. And it is simple. It is functional, and I will not change it. I straight up love the simplicity of this system. I love the simplicity of this system. I love the lack of all the plumbing connections that are going to fail, the problems, the chemicals, the mixers. All the things that I have to deal with are all set right here. Do I got to batch mix this? Yes, I do. Is that hard to do? No, it takes me two seconds. I have charts right here. Tell them exactly what chemical ratios I want for whatever it is I'm doing, and I'm batch mixing for that. Now for houses, I barely, or barely ever um, use my 12 volt system for houses anymore. Now the first two years I used it religiously, okay? Every single time, that's what I used. Now barely ever, uh, sorry, it's getting pretty warm out here. It's still in the 90s. Um, I use the X-Jet. I use the X-Jet setup right here and I have it modified slightly so I get less, uh, um, less uh aeration and less uh mist out of it but i have the extra m5 twist nozzle there i put a uh 12 inch lance in here and then here's the actual x jet unit but by adding that 12 inch lance between there i get a lot less mist on the sides and it works fantastic i love this thing i love it so much with 40 foot of uh, uh flexzilla line on there hooked up to this um i don't have to really move it around a house a whole lot i grab this and that and i carry it and i set it in the middle of the side of a house so I would come out here and like here, for the example, I'd set it right in the middle of that driveway right here and I could wash this whole side, the whole front side, the whole side over there and that whole side of that house without even moving the tank. Same scenario over here. You could do all of that. So limiting how often I have to maneuver that is a beautiful thing. And that 50 foot of line, actually it's down to about 40 now for me cutting things out of it and pieces here and there. But um that X-Jet system works fantastic. It's, it's what I use. Uh, you change your inserts, your orifices are right here. But I change all of these. They actually give you a chart for so you know what ratios are what. Uh, but these are all your tips. Okay, there should be one more in here somewhere. Oh, it's in the gun. But uh, you have your different... Uh, your tips in there, your uh, proportioners that you can change out. That's what I got in here. I got a bunch of them and uh, lets me control what ratios I have coming out of that X jet. I love the X jet. It is so simple. I don't have to pull this out, clean it out, empty it. I basically pull up to a house, grab my line, connect to their water source, yank this off the trailer and pull it out where I need it. Hook up 100 feet of line to this or 150 if I need to, whatever I want. Grab my X-Jet, walk out the door, and I'm ready to go, and I can spray, and I can clean. No waiting for lines to empty out. It's getting warm in here again, sorry. No waiting for uh, um, my chemical lines to get rid of the chem to get back to clean water. No waiting for the chems to come back into the line. No, no, none of that stuff. No worrying about downstream injectors failing, ratios being off. No, any of that. No having to mess with my 12-volt system, batch mix, everything. I only use this, like I said, roof and concrete now. That X-Jet, fantastic. Straight up love it, and it's affordable. Um, I actually have two more of these tanks I bought as backups, but uh, like I said, this one's going on three years of use now. Been fantastic. I think I even have the other X-Jet. Uh, wherever you are, right here, here's another X-Jet. Still set up, right? It never even been used yet uh, to replace that if I need it, but love this setup. Okay, works absolutely flawless. Five gallon can right here for water, or I mean for uh, gas to run the pressure washer with me. Uh, another nice thing about a four gallon a minute machine, I can run this thing forever. I can go almost a whole day on one tank of gas unless I'm doing concrete. Well, I get a half a day, but uh, you get a lot out of that tank. So I only need to carry five gallons of extra gas. Uh, guns love these got two of them there's one right there here's one right here these are the sutter uh sutter 2605s love them i use an m5 twist which is also what you saw on my x jet right here okay and uh what's nice is watch i can adjust this from fan to from a fan spray where it's real closed open that up and now it's a straight stream so i get total control but just by turning that i love that setup uh quick releases on there so it's real easy um but this is my basically my gun setup this is what i'm doing when i'm washing houses and all that stuff 99 percent of the time and i have a four foot lance here i have a seven footer running along next to this thing here and i also have another seven footer here that runs there. I have a another 
four footer right here, a three footer with a shooter tip. Okay, the shooter tip is amazing. I love this shooter tip, just reaches a long way. Again, it's rated for my machine, four gallons per minute. Um, but I love this, uh, this one pretty much just stays on here. If I'm gonna grab it, I just grab this whole set up here, see if we can put it back in with one hand. There we go. And can I pop it back up? There we go. But shooter tip on that, I just take this out and throw it on the ground with me. And when I need it on the two and three stories, it's good. If I get more stories than that, I can connect more lances together and make them work. There's my turbo gun. This is my for uh, concrete. And I just use it. It's the one that came with that pressure washer. But it is right here and it is just a, uh, but it, it works all right. It's not bad. But it's got a uh, three foot lance on there. And then I got a turbo tip. On the end of it, I use for cutting in concrete edges and stuff like that. So simple, effective. Um, kind of show you how I hang everything in here. Simple little process. Uh, my rain gear, uh, all rubber Heli Hansen Impertech that I use for when I am, uh, when it's pouring rain on me, the jacket's really nice. When I'm doing concrete and stuff, the bibs are good. They keep you nice and uh, keep you from getting covered up with all the debris and stuff flying. A couple shelves up here, more soaps. This is a very important one right here. This is actually a pee bucket. We live in you know or not live in but we are using an enclosed trailer one of the advantages to an enclosed trailer is the fact that if i have to pee i can walk in here and close that door and i can go pee in here and nobody knows what i'm doing i don't have to go knocking on neighbors doors or ask them if i can use a restroom i can just grab that bucket and i can be right here and pee right in here if i need to and um you know so it just makes it nice when tina comes with me on some jobs some of the roof jobs where she's going to be on rinse duty and, and property protection uh we'll take a bucket and we'll put the lugaloo on there and if she has to go to the restroom we can just close these doors and she can pee right in here beauty of an enclosed trailer other beauty of an enclosed trailer is all of this stuff is secure okay this is all in here and secure i'm not worried about anybody messing with stuff um at any time all my tapes these are the best tapes in the world in the world to use this is sure tape 944 uh, no, I'm sorry, sure tape 444. Um, but this stuff is amazing for taping outlets and electrical and ring doorbells and things of that nature. This is just a rinse bucket for using for this or anything I need to, but it is measurable, which is nice. So I can measure anything I need to. And uh, my hat, this is a spare parts bucket, huck boots uh, in there, all that kind of stuff. More spare parts and things. Safety glasses are vitally important. And this is the rag that I use to go around and finish up the house when I'm done. Another hat that I wear just to keep the stuff off of me. Concrete cleaning brush right there just for scrubbing and agitating concrete. We have a long pole brush right here for single story houses for doing gutters or anything I need to or scrubbing on the side of the house. If I have to, that's what that is. So the gutter hook right here, gutter cleaning tool on an expansion pole. Very, very cool tool. It really gets, it lets you reach a long way on gutters. And a squeegee that I use for anything I need to for clearing out uh, pools of water when I'm trying to uh, do concrete. We also have another gutter brush for two stories, which is on a long pole and means I can get two story gutters all the way up there and stuff. And usually I can do them right from the ground. So we got a lot of extension out of there. Um, these are all just quick release, you know, quick, fast release type uh, zip ties that we use on there. And uh, I think that, and this is just all my extra chemicals and things like that that I need in gallon jugs. Um, my blower for doing roofs, things like that. Just hangs right on there, set. This tool kit, this is a garbage bag I just keep in here, but this tool kit has got all kinds of spare parts in there as well too. There's tools, but also spare things. I got two more M5 twists. I have a bunch of these, uh, everything I need to rebuild this whole entire gun for the ball valves, extensions, uh, pieces, more. I have like five or six more of these adjustable, almost like an M5 twist style, um, but that's for the uh, 12 volt soft wash rig. Uh, I have a ton of parts in here for everything, all kinds of tips. Uh, there's another shooter tip, haven't even used yet, but there's another shooter tip. Uh, X-Jet, uh, spare parts, uh, proportioners, all my O-rings for everything. You will never have enough O-rings. Make sure you have every size O-ring you could ever need. You go through them constantly. Um, so you have all that, uh, you know, all kinds of quick connects, another shelf unit. You know, just a ton of stuff in here. Um, hose clamps, need a ton of hose clamps. Teflon tape, can never have enough Teflon tape. Uh, these, because you burn through them so much on your trailers, are good to have spare parts of those. Uh, keys for the locks, just all kinds of everything 
Um, part wise, here's another ball valve, best ball valve there is. This is a D10, I think is what they call it. Is it a D10? That's what I always call it. DN10, but this ball valve is amazing. Okay, you will use this thing religiously. Um, you actually keep it, fits barely in there right way. There we go. Uh, ball valve right here. That's it right there. Okay, that ball valve, just awesome. So, uh, so I have a spare one of those, all kinds of spare parts. Everything you can think of is in here for spare parts to fix anything I need to replace or repair on my stuff is basically in here. Spark plugs for that. Um, anything I need is somehow in this system or in this system. So I have all bases covered. I have grease gun up here. Again, more cams. Those are just uh, extra uh, tie down straps. And uh, I have another pump for my soft wash rig right there. This, I can quick release that. Just put, twist those twist ties off, pull this out of there real quick and, re, and put a new pump on there. Brand new one sitting right here in the box if I need it, if that goes out. WD-40 always close at hand because when you're done at the end of the day, you want a WD-40. All of your connections here and everything, hit all that stuff with WD-40. I use quick release connections on even my hoses here so it's really fast to switch out to connect this to my pressure washer or connect it to this gun, which if I pop that... See, we can pop that off. See, quick re quick connects on there. So then I can just pop that off and set that, hook that right up to my pressure washer or hook it right up to my tank here. So it gives me total, I'm going to just drop that and fix that in a little bit, but uh gives me total control there. Spare tire, pump up sprayers. This one usually running about a, uh, a six or 8% uh, sodium hypochlorite bleach in there. That one is actually running oxalic acid. Uh, and so these are always just right here for me to do anything I need to do with. Ladder real fast for me to be able to get up and get my ladders that are on the top. The run up here. I got that one right there, just a single one I use for a lot of ranch stuff that I need to. And then I got a 28 footer up here. Uh, if I can't get it with a 28 footer, I'm not doing a job. I'm just at the point in my life where I don't need to be on 32 foot ladders and hiking that high anymore. So that's it, sweet and easy. They just, uh, you know, they're there, they're set, they work. Um, but I use that ladder to be able to access them. And uh, Dawn dish soaps I run in, I run Dawn dish soap in with my house washes uh just a smidge just a little bit um in each one mainly because then i can see the foaming action um of the soap of when i'm running the uh the the bleach basically lets me know when it's coming out of the x jet make sure i don't have any problems it just it's uh just a fail safe for me so i run just a little bit in there and then i use it for concrete cleaning quite a bit uh and then uh so that's that and then Basically, I think that covers it. Another ladder right here, which is handy, a six footer, uh, because a lot of people have cameras. And big ladders on the top, I don't want to have to fight to get down. And sometimes they won't let you get under where the cameras are. So this six footer here, I got the two extension ladders on top, and I have this four footer here, which are nice. And then we use these bags, saran wrap, saran wrap, saran wrap, comes in real handy for cameras. So does these bags for covering cameras. I have tarps and everything in there too for covering up uh, uh, stained doors and things of that nature. And a uh, tripod for when I'm doing my videos for production stuff as far as for, uh, you know, for promotional things. So that just kind of stays there and just sits in there for, I use it so much. And uh, these are for trapping. I got four of them here. Here's one here I was using for something, but those are good for bagging downspouts. Always keep compactor bags and stuff in here. I got a whole roll of them in there, but I can use them for bagging downspouts on roof jobs. And I do believe uh, that just about covers it other than the cone. Don't forget your cone, because then that way when you're out here and you're parked on the side of the road and your trailer's here, you can drop that cone right there and people see it and you are legal and they are not going to hit your uh, vehicle so that's it right there sweet simple and uh easy i made quick connection locks for all this stuff to make it fast i got a paracord hooked on a ring down there that locks right onto the axle a strap that locks the axle here and another one right here that just keeps it from sliding out but i throw this thing in and boom done that's it quick hook there you know nothing nothing crazy it's all about efficiency and speed and uh for me personally hard to beat this system this system is straight up flawless uh for everything i do and uh it may take me a couple more minutes at a job but i'm working so much easier 
again, I'm not rolling 900 or, or 700 feet of hose and uh, fighting that stuff. And I can do these huge um, lake house properties with multiple structures spread out, spread out five, six, 700 feet apart. And I can move around them much easier. So for me, this system is what works great. I have a lot of these bags hanging. Okay, or these uh, just old t-shirts hanging everywhere. These shirts are just rags. So I can just grab this right here and use them to wipe my hands, my face, anything I want to. They're just handy. Uh, this is just a nylon shirt here that I actually use if I get chilly because it's a long sleeve shirt in the early mornings. And uh, a bunch of spare straps that I use for anything and everything. And uh, I believe we pretty much covered the whole setup and everything in here and that's really it but i mean this is a major money making trailer right here this thing makes me a fortune of money and it's so easy to do like i said when i come home at the end of the day i back it here in the driveway and i drop it and i don't care about nothing it's all closed i have the locks right here if i decide i want to lock it key to like locks hang right there and i can lock the doors and have this thing set it is just easy i don't have to mess with anything i love it all in here and consolidated and kept together uh, even a grease gun right here as well too so i can grease uh, my axles on the trailer and grease all my components that need it just a simple rock solid functional layout of a trailer this is a six by ten i like having the rv door because i can run my hoses brrr, right out here on uh you know on the passenger side of the vehicle which is when you pull up to a house just simple and easy uh these are those extra tough boots they last pretty well but after two seasons, actually about a season, uh, you can see they're pretty much, they get shot. They're, they're broke here where your foot flexes, they're done. These made it one season, and I still wear them um, when I'm just washing houses and stuff like that because I, you're not getting wet enough that it's going to bother me. So I'm going to wear them out until I can't wear them anymore, and then I will switch over to these uh, Huck ones that I bought earlier this year that I haven't even tried yet. But we will see which ones end up lasting longer. And uh, we will see how it goes. It's just a nice hat. Keep the sun off me when I'm working out there in the wide open on, like I said, the lake houses. And I do believe I have covered everything in this trailer in extreme detail for you. And uh, hopefully it helps you out. Hopefully you gain something from it. Whether you're a pro already thinking about starting or just wondering how this stuff works or even looking for ideas on how to set a trailer up. Hopefully it helps you. Thanks for watching.